Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2020. I'm Atlas, joined by what did, and we are going the distance. It is nine games the dream as T1 take on Gen G for the final match of the night. Yeah, I was preparing uh, for this uh, broadcast since uh, 1 p.m., right? And yep. it's already 11.30 p.m. right now, so my thong and brain is melting already, <laughs> but I'm trying my best. And this game is actually waking me up because it was really intense, but high quality at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. These two teams are just a joy to watch, to be honest, and I wouldn't have it any <laughs> other way. This is just this is exactly what we've been waiting for. And uh, Genji versus T1 has delivered so far, and still there is one more game to go, and we get to find out who it is that is going to be uh, taking this. Like, I just feel like whoever wins this feels like they're going to uh, win Spring. As uh, turret damage, 50% here by the Tristana, and I, I'm really glad that we have that stat, because honestly, the rest of the stats, not super impressive. But do you know how you win League of Legends? You take down all the structures and then take down the Nexus. And Faker did that. Yeah. It's all about pushing game. It's not about damage game. And he just got the POG with zero kills and zero deaths. Only four assists. Look at this. Faker is just jumping on the Nexus and he fell to W and Flash. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It got what him closer to the Nexus. He's taking Nexus. He got closer <laughs> to the Nexus. That's what you got to do. You got to kill the Nexus. Nailed it. Yeah. Wow. Impressive stat. Yeah, two for Teddy. Zero actually, kill, I'm surprised that uh, none of the stat, none of the votes went to Effort. I actually think that Effort was sort oh, of second yeah. in line for the player of the game, but Faker, well deserved there. Yeah, I mean, I already mentioned it from the uh, last games that Effort is back is on form because oh yeah, at round one, uh, Effort was not playing damn good uh, compared to last year, and right now it feels like Effort is back. He is definitely back. He's so good. He's super, super clean. Yeah. And uh, this is after we were talking up life, uh, improving his performance uh, in round two, especially. And uh, it's it's hard to talk about like a player on Gen G getting better because, you know, they've just been winning every single game, right? Yeah, yeah. But like life does feel like the reason why Gen G have looked better in more of their recent matches, but hasn't been able to do it so far today, apart from in game number one. And honestly, that was because Gen G were able to capitalize on an overreach by T1. So if Genji pull it back here today, then we can look at game one and say that Ruler, if he had have died when he went down to like one health in that last team fight, it would have been a T1 2-0 and it would have been all over. Yeah. And also uh, Coach Kim said they don't deserve a first or second spot right now. So it's really interesting that they are already trying to bid up Genji today. Yeah, and uh, already congratulations to Genji. Even after this series, if T1 are able to win, Genji will still be in first place. It would have needed a 2 0 for T1 <laughs> uh, for them to get to even points with Genji and even match score. So they are still going to be confirmed first place after this, but T1, there's no way that they can move down to third. <laughs> so, Coach Kim, but still, don't worry. T1 has one problem in the band picks when they're on the red side is Senna, because they don't like to play Senna, it seems like. Yeah. And Aphelios is going to be banned oh. on blue. That's crazy. Yeah, then it's going to be easy Senna ban for T1, in my opinion. It's not even... Or the Azir ban. Oh, man. Maybe. But I think Genji wants to play Zillion into Azir. Hey, that's true. That has looked like their, their, their classic counter pick. Two seconds to go. I think so, Senna needs to be the ban. Yeah. Unless they want to ban Orn. No, Set's oh. going to be banned. Never mind. So they want to trade something. And if they do not pick Senna and Orn, I don't think this is the good trade by T1. Well, Callista and Orn or, could definitely come in. Just Callista and Orn. And just give away Senna again. Because you beat they already won the matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, we'll see what T1 decides to do. I think the Orn makes the most sense here, but they are just going to lock away the Tarek to make sure that they have that combo. Now you've got... You could actually lock in Senna, Senna or... Orn or Senna Tom Kench. It doesn't really matter, but now T1 can go towards the Orn next. If they would like or to. Or if, if they are worrying about the mid lane picks getting pinched, they can pick mid lane here also. Because Genji can bend two another champions on the mid side. 
That's true. I wonder what Faker wants to pick into the Azir here. He does have a lot of champions that he can go towards and, you know, sort of any assassin style can go towards that. I would have loved to see an Ornn pick up here from T1 because then they could have banned the Silas away and denied the answer, but they are going to go towards Kuz's Olaf this time around. And they can even ban the Rek'Sai if they want to make sure that Clit is on something else. Yeah, and also Clit is not performing this series. Let's be honest. Yeah, you're right. He's getting cut way too much. So I, I think uh, this these snipe banning, like Jaraban and Trundle, which is so safe to play, is really great. And just giving him such a risk pick like uh, Rek'Sai. And currently he's getting cut a lot, so... I think this is great banting by T1. Yeah, and I, I expect T1 to ban another jungler. There it goes, the Rek'Sai taken away, so Clid's champion pool even further pinched. As Genji, I love the Cassidy ban, an old school counter into the Azir, and a champion that Faker is very, very good at. Um, Would have meant There's that T1... actually so much respect towards oh, yeah. uh, Faker. Banning Cassidy in 2020. <laughs> There's actually so much respect towards uh, Faker, no? Absolutely. And now, what other uh, counter do they want to take away? The Echo is oh, the standard. It, are we going to get Faker's Velkos? I want Faker's Velkos so bad. Or Zillion? Yeah, Faker could just play Zillion. He's an old school Zillion player. But uh, this could be the oh, other man. one. Yasuo? Oh. Really? No, this is not a game for I mean, Yasuo Faker's Rise was just opinion. buffed. <laughs> Faker Galio? It's also hype, because he only played Galio in some tournament. Oh, wow, okay. If I'm correct. Yeah, I think it's been a long time since uh, we've seen the Faker Galio. Actually, the, the most famous Faker game with Galio in it, it was against Rookie in uh, Rift Rivals uh, for that sick match in, uh, in, I believe, 2018. It was when uh, SKT weren't very strong, and uh, that was still such a sick matchup between uh, Rookie and Faker. But that is, uh, that is me uh, reminiscing a little bit too much, and we need to come back to the present here, as that is Lee Sin locked in from Clid. And we have to remember, Clid, if he's known for a champion, it's probably Lee Sin. Maybe Jarvan a little bit more now, but his Lee is super good. As now a last pick on the blue side of the Orn. It just tells a story about this particular uh, series so far. I mean, he's kind of surprised that the Orn went through all the time and just Genji could pick the Orn at the last pick. Oh no, don't do it. Don't do it to one. And they're trying to pick Aatrox? Oh, no, I love this. Fiora. Please, Fiora is so much better. Silas would be fine. Or Silas. Silas would be fine. Okay, yeah. thank goodness. Oh man, I thought it was going to be a throw. I think uh, I think the so, Aatrox was hovered just to troll us. So Faker is just prepared Akali to play against Azir or is it mid Silas actually? Or is it Faker playing Silas, but he's going to go top lane? Because remember, like Faker's Silas is oh. one of his greatest picks of all time. You go back to like, I don't remember which international tournament it was, but he stole a Narult and stunned four oh. people with it and solo won a team fight. Like Faker's Silas is super legendary. But it, yep, 20 seconds, Faker Akali, yeah. confirmed. So he's going to be picking this into the uh, into the Azir of BDD. I mean, I remember uh, in his video that uh, celebrating 2k kills, Faker. Yeah. I, one moment I remember, Akali and uh, Azir matchup. He used E and then just jump over the ultimate of Azir and gets the kill later. Do you remember yeah. that point? Yeah, he's just, he's extremely good. This was back, of course, when Akali was busted in the mid lane. Uh, but still, <laughs> like, the matchup is basically the same. And we'll see whether Faker's Akali is go going to be enough to pull them over the edge. This, it all comes down to this, guys. Like, this is a huge game three and could be really telling uh, to what our uh, spring final is going to be like. And... We could be in for a, a really, really hype uh, final in spring. Yeah, before this, Azir was really high prior, but apparently there is so many picks that you can play against, like Valkyrs, Zillion, and this time around is Akali. We're gonna see if it's actually impactful against Azir or not. Yeah, and we'll see whether the center time Kenshi's are gonna actually work out this time around, because last time T1, it felt like the, the Callista Tarek was enough to deal with it, 
And uh, Ruler's uh, center really... I mean, the fasting center is what it's called, but honestly, he it felt like he was fasting a little bit too much, you know? Yeah. And the first time around, when they got the first story of the top side, that swapping timing was just so great. Yeah. So I think this time around, they should focus more about their rotation than laning phase, Genji side. No, I, I completely agree. But they still have to play it out. And we'll have to find out who's going to be able to take it here as a ruler has a chance to run it back and see whether this time the uh, center time Kench is going to work better. As uh, Genji will also have the Orn of their own, and uh, we'll see whether Kana can answer with his fake Orn horns a little bit better, as we're going to get trolled once again by all of the rams just running around the rift. And this time there is no Scorch. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank goodness. BDD learned. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, no, he doesn't have Scorch. Thank goodness. The adaptability one. We're fine. And so... That's zero. We got zero Scorches. Oh, just, just a joy. What a fantastic time to be alive. And Cuz actually got the Predator for Olaf here. Yeah, Predator Olaf. We haven't seen it. Like, I think that uh, the first time we saw Predator Olaf, it was Tarzan when he was uh, experimenting with a whole lot of different, like, Redemption Olaf builds and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. That was uh, a lot of fun to watch, but it's been a while since we've seen it, especially since Conqueror became so popular. Yeah, if you go Conqueror, oh, this means Lee Sin is having seven losing streaks. Four loses on Tarzan, and Pyoshik two loses, and Haru. Wow. But you have to remember that Clid's pretty good at Lee Sin. 21 and 10 so far. Um, just over two thirds of the time he's going to be winning, and his KDA is not bad either. It's now Cuz. Heading up towards the top side is now Rascal, losing out on this trade in the end. And Cuz will get in here. Rascal may have to flash here as the Undertow is going yeah. to be primed. Good sidestep there, but will get the reset. The flash comes down. Oh, what was man. that? Doesn't even matter. Kana is going to pick that one up and gets a whole bunch of his health back with the Triumph as well as his Kingslayer. And uh, that's a great first blood for T1. Yeah, Kana and Cuz. Maybe you guys expect more from the... Uh, other jungler, Elim and Kana, but these two players' synergy this series is on point. Yeah, it's been working out. I think that uh, Kuz having that bit of extra uh, oomph, you know, with the fact that now Elim's there and challenging his spot might have uh, added a bit more motivation to good old Kuz. And this is a great defensive move by Effort because they knew that Lee Sin invaded their jungle, so he's just body checking that if he the yeah, well, you can see bottom side of the map, Teddy and Effort are getting pushed in. Ruler and life. Uh, if you can hear scratching in the background, I'm really sorry. My cat's scratching my wall. I will need to deal with that, but I need to see whether Clid is actually going to go for this gank bottom side first. So sorry, guys. We're running a professional broadcast here, and I've got a cat scratching my wall. Is now Teddy trying to get some sticks into Ruler. Does pull them out. Good rend damage there. Try and uh, win out the, on that trade. As uh, you're gonna have to take it away just for one second, we did. I'm really sorry. I'm just gonna remove my cat from my room. Okay, I'm gonna cast by myself. It's okay. And now we can see some replay about the top play. I think uh, Rascal really needs to just flash Alia when he actually just starts the first axis. I uh, axe there, but yeah, I mean it was just so simple gank right there. All right, I'm back. And great move. How was the replay? Was it good? Right there. Yeah, it was just fantastic. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so like, much. I, I was explaining so much. You know? I can't believe it. Now, in your second language, you've had to solo cast because I got ganked by a cat. <laughs> oh, Life's hard. It's crazy. What's happening in my life? <laughs> well, we're witnessing Genji losing for the first time on a lot of champions. Senna, Tom Kench, oh, yeah. and the Orn have lost for the first time in this series. That's all because of P1. Exactly. As Ruler takes so much damage from that turret shot, that is not what you want to see. But Piercing Darkness is one hell of an ability and will get them back up to basically full health pretty early on. Clid wandering over a ward here as you saw Rascal just making sure that Clid locks down the uh, Rift Scuttler, but you can see so much vision available for T1 in this early game yet again. As Cuz walking over towards this Drake, and now will, I believe, walk into this brush 
as Predator does give his position away. Now Kaz looking to start off the Drake. It seems like free Drake right there, because Cleat is all the position for the Drake. And also, T1 have so much vision control up towards that top side as well. They get vision down, Kaz is going to move immediately out of the way just to get the Drake out of the pit and will claim the first uh, Mountain Drake. Good knock up there from Rascal, but he doesn't want to dive the Silas. A dangerous champion to be taken down as they do claim it. And the Ocean Drake will be the next one. We have Cloud Soul or Infernal Soul available this game. But good thing about this game is Cleet is farming so well. He's even more farmed than his top lane. Wow, how the heck did he do that? I think he is just farming for whole time. Just while how is ganking Lee's top lane. In. Yeah, just while Cuz is ganking top and getting objective, he was just farming for himself. So I'm not sure if he's gonna affect the game as he is. Uh, apparently, Lee Sin is losing seven games in a row. So let's see if Cleet can bring up some new change to this. Well, also like Lee Sin out farming an Olaf, like he's three camps ahead of an Olaf right now, which is just insane. I don't know how he how didn't do even do that? build the Tiamat. So yeah. I don't know, man. Sometimes crazy things happen. As, Level 6 yeah, already? We're going to find the snare on the bottom side of the map. This is a difficult dive as Ruler goes down extremely low. Has absolutely no mana either. And that was an aggressive dive attempt and one that I don't think ever stood a chance of working. Yeah, I mean, for sure, I think T1 didn't expect to lease him to be in level 6, but also didn't expect to just lane gank like that with level advantage. If he actually came from behind, then maybe they can force two flashes or something but actually that was not that impactful at all yeah so that level advantage meant nothing for now well not unless he can turn around the next dragon rage kick it's already halfway off cooldown now as you can see but his flash is on cooldown so no kick flashes to be coming down for the next five minutes it's going to be great news for t1 and in that time of course cuz has been able to close the gap as far as the cs he's moving towards his cinder hulk pretty comfortably as you can see, Clid has uh, started up the blue buff. We'll be handing that one over to B2D and then back through his jungle once again. Uh, kind of having a decent time up here topside, but once again, Rascal is farming very well. We have a look at this dive attempt once again. And Teddy obscuring uh, himself and... Uh, sorry, no, he wasn't obscuring him because that's really his job. But uh, just being able to stay alive is just super easy for T1. Yeah, and Kuz finally... Uh followed the farm right now, so he's same level. So I don't think they're gonna back back out from this header, by the way. Yeah, you can see Kaz is just running at BDD right now. Doesn't find the undertow and they don't have the vision in that area. But Genji do have to pull away from the Herald. And that play is not going to reap any rewards just yet. This map rotation that I mentioned before, Genji is already uh, aware of T1 uh, ball lane. He's moving whole map. Especially last game, they did a great job on the map rotation. So, Ooh, effort. yeah, really focusing on it. Effort had to flash. Ruler now in a little bit of trouble, but Piercing Darkness gets that health bar all the way back up to full, and Effort is at half health. Clitted started off this Herald once again. She gets pulled out of the pit, but Faker and Cuz over in the area. Because now the Abyssal Voyage will guarantee this uh, Rift Herald for Gen G. It took a while, but they got there in the end as Kana just uses the ult to clear out the minion wave as the hijack was expiring. And that is going to mean that Genji are able to secure the Rift Herald. So nice work. I mean, it took them a little bit of time, but they got there in the end. Yeah, I mean, they should have it, uh, should get it, because Akali right now is not a champion before Gunblade. And BDD is having fun time on the mid lane, so they should be able to get it with all the pressure they have on the top side. Also, uh, Raska is playing so good in this matchup. Yeah. Already 20 CS is ahead on the top side. And they really need to break something because their mid top is losing so hard. And also, I think that's almost two tower plates. The flash forward from Canada, though, they really want to try and uh, knock uh, Rascal down a peg. He just wants to get in, grabs himself a tower plate. <laughs> he may as well, as uh, T1 what? are able to grab that kill. I mean, two tower plates is sure worth more than a, a kill, right? Yeah, actually. 20 goals more. Yeah, not bad. I mean, with an assist, you're probably going to lose out global gold-wise, but <laughs> that doesn't matter. I'm still typing worth in all chat. Absolutely. Well, slowly T1 is getting some kills. 
as I mentioned it, T1 has to do some play because slowly their mid jungle is losing and Akali is gonna lose mid lane until he gets the gunplay. But Genji is just accelerating the game with the header on the bot side. Yeah, they are gonna be the mid pressure. They're gonna be getting a lot of these tower plates as well. Remember, it's only ticking up to 11 minutes now, so still a lot of time to grab tower plates. Kuz clearing out vision, but he's not gonna be able to stop this Rift Herald from giving a lot of money over to Genji. And now, with Predator on them, Genji is still moving aggressively as Kuz throws an axe towards the Lee Sin. But the Lee Sin's still with an advantage of about three camps. His Q lands onto Effort, he has the kick available, but no flash. This point in time would have needed to be a safeguard insect play if he was going to make anything like that happen. And T1 just back away. And, and remember, that stat still exists if you get first turret as Genji or T1. 100% win rate. So oh, that's true. Keep our eye out still for the turret. Off, by the way. Still hasn't gone down just yet, so we haven't been given the spoiler as to who's going to win this game. See if T1 do move over and try and contest this Ocean Drake. You can see Kuz in position as the teleport now does come in. Teddy looking to jump over this wall. Fair bit of damage there onto Ruler, but the Rend is now on cooldown as it will be a 50-50. There's the Cosmic Insight, but it is going to be locked down. BDD throws in the ultimate, but look at that. Senna and Tom Kent both having to flash to get over this wall. Faker dives on in there, not able to get the kill oh. as the Onhorn gets the double knockup, and we have an Infernal Soul this time around as the Drakes are even. Faker's ulti just ran out of uh, the timing that he flashed. So it was just a little bit unlucky. Oh no. But at the same time, great play by Genji. They secured the second Drake, so this is so great news for them. Yeah, and also able to slow the game down as well by staggering T1's ability to get towards a Dragon Soul. They would have loved to be able to pick up two in a row and then uh, lock down that win condition in the Infernal Soul. But uh, even if it was a Cloud Soul, you know that's absolutely fine. Getting that extra movement speed for champions like Kana who can uh, get a whole bunch of different hijacks in a team fight and be really, really sticky. Actually, would have been okay. But uh, T1 now, they still do have an opportunity to lock down a three-stack Infernal Drake, and that is just gigantic if they can get there. Because now Gen G looking to try and take down the first turret and secure themselves the series. <laughs> yeah, that is true, because 100% win rate is not a joke. No, I mean, that's the stat, man. We, we have to abide by the stats. So far, the stats don't lie. So, and maybe some people might ask about, is that uh, first turret that important? And my answer is actually yes, because you control the map first and you are ahead in tempo. Yeah, true. So that accelerates game really fast and it makes game so easy. You're always first on the map after first turret. So. And that means you have both pressure. Yep. And one lane, one laner is going to be uh, mid lane. Uh, in the mid game, and if you have mid pressure as a bot laner, it's great to have uh, map map effect whole lane, and especially when you have Tom Kench, it's more effectable. So. Yeah, definitely. And uh, as you just saw, guys, uh, Gen G were able to get the first turret. You can see it at the top of your screen. That means the stats are not lying. We uh, need to send some uh, congratulations over to Gen G as we check out this replay once again. Yeah. If stats never lies, then Genji should win this game, but still, game is on, and yes, sure, they have late game competition, but still, they're not sure about the that Teddy late game. Yeah, exactly. They still have the Teddy champion, and uh, T1 can always rely on him, no matter which champion he's piloting, to just play like a beast in the late game. And uh, he did it in game number one, he did it in game number two. Um, game one was actually just so crazy with how it went right like it shouldn't have been uh if, if you look at the scoreline you're like oh genji won game one well you have to watch the game to really understand how they won game one because honestly it was a coin flip towards the end and just uh the fact that ruler survived when he very much could have gone down in that last little instance of fighting not taking away from their victory but still these two teams are so evenly matched yeah, I agree. And the point is, Faker got Gunblade, finally. And that means Akali is finally a champion. Yep. So they're going to try to fight him. Well, Devour is now on cooldown. Ruler throws back the Piercing Darkness, though. And it feels like it's very, very difficult to even damage a Senator Tom Kench. But RT1 are definitely trying to. 
flashes. The snare is going to come down. Teddy avoids it, and now Fate's Call is going to come no in flash. there looking for the dive. Not going to be able to get the knock up there as Effort does go invincible. Ruler in trouble as Kanna gets into the back line. The Olaf locks down that first kill. Good flash there from Effort, but he will get knocked up. Faker looking to try and get into the back line, but now BDD is underneath his turret and just taken down by Kanna. A gigantic team fight victory for T1, and they'll eliminate the turret as well. That was just the power spike for Akali and they did insane team fight on the top side. Five men dive instantly, just TPing in all the map rotation wise. Again on the top side with the bolt lane, map rotation, T1 just got the huge point. Yeah, just huge, and now might even be able to get this uh, inner turret. They're not going to go for it actually, just opting in to try and get a good reset as Kana misses the abscond, and Clit is going to live for now. And it's starting to look like, I mean, there are two stats that are going to lie. It's the Lee Sin losing streak stat that's going to be fake, or it's going to be the uh, first turret win rate. And uh, Genji really want that first turret win rate to be true. Yeah. I mean, this play was just knitted for T1 right now, because if they go to the late game, I don't think they can win against Orn and Hazir in Senna Champion Cup. So it was just the power spike for Akali, and they used it perfectly yeah. as 5 so This is just great play by T1. Well, Clit is actually probably going to be able to take down Shirley here. 17 minutes into the game. Check training. Yeah, and Kaz is going to grab the first Infernal off the game. This is going to be huge. If T1 can get an Infernal Soul, I don't care what you say about late game team comp, because uh, it's going to give so many extra stats with three stacks, as well as the fact that you get that big AoE proc as well. And they have Teddy able to apply it. They've got the Akali into the back line. And uh, they're going to need a whole lot more Devours than just one on a 40 second cooldown. Oh yeah. And definitely uh, Kana is showing that Orn is not broken on the top side. He's countering Orn with the Silas perfectly in this game and last game. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's looking like we finally have an answer to the Orn that Korea has under understood. Because it definitely wasn't the uh, Aatrox that everyone kept trying to pick into it. Uh, nor was it set. Set didn't work out either. And now we've finally figured it out as the Silas can just grab the ultimate and be just as impactful in a team fight. And seems to be able to just out lane once the game has gone on for a certain period of time. I still think Orn in the early stages is absolutely fine against the Silas. But uh, once Silas gets to that, you know, five points into his Kingslayer, he becomes really difficult to move. But again, Genji has really great late game comps, so if they manage to delay this game for 20 minutes, yeah. they just need 20 minutes more, and they're gonna have full item with the uh, Orn Masterpiece, but if they get solo kill here... Yeah, Faker was looking for it, huge. gets a flash, one versus one, didn't take any damage there either, and you can see the Rascal 0-3-0, this is not the kind of Orn that we wanted in this game, and certainly not the Orn that we're expecting from Rascal, who was... What, sitting at 7-0 and zero on the pick at the beginning of today? And 8-0 uh, and zero after game 1. And currently 8-1 and one lose. And is it going to be 8-2 and two lose? And it's, still great stat, it's still a great stat, but they're looking for first place. And they really have to go over T1 Mountain. Because they are always playing weird or... They always lose against T1. Why it's always T1? It's so Genji. funny because it used to be the other way around. Gen G, or when they were Samsung Galaxy, used to be the team that oh, yeah. could take down T1, right? But now it's it's like the shoes are on the other foot. And yes, these two teams have gone through a lot of different iterations in that time. You know, there is no longer Crown in the mid lane. There's no longer Ambition in the jungle, things like that. But Rule is still there. Life is still there. And now it's just Clid that's defected over to the other side. And uh, Genji not able to uh, take down the behemoth that is T1. I tell you what, that's yeah, super mean, entertaining. I, yeah, I mentioned that if you get first turret, you normally get the mid lane prior, but this time around, they have both side lane pressure T1, so it's really easy to get mid prior because they're gonna push first and they're gonna group mid first. That's basically how it is. So yeah. T1 is just controlling map comfortable. But at the same time, getting all the vision control uh, around the Nasher while they're having Kalista and Tariq, which means it's so much pressure for Genji to check vision and check the Nasher side. 
Well, now at least Gen.G should be able to utilize his Riptail to try and get some decent damage onto the outer turret mid lane. They haven't been able to do that so far, but the Riptail actually is trying to deal with minions. There's a kickback onto Teddy, though. Immediately he gets exhausted, and the Dawning Shadow will finish him off. We do have the ulti down, but... BDD has his as well. Cuz he's gonna have to flash out of there. The Herald's just going rogue Faker? in the back line. But Faker, perfect execution. Canna's there as well. Ruler is going to be eliminated. A triple kill for the Silas. He could actually look for the Penta here as Faker gets the backflip. Rascal taking the damage, but the Abscond isn't gonna land. Now they're gonna go for the dive. Canna, can you get there with the Penta kill on the Silas? Life is gonna go golden. Canna manages to pick oh. up the Quadra kill in such an extended fight. And the execution onto Cuz. It's 10 to 1. T1 are crushing this game. It seemed like a great engage by Clayton, but the side laners, who has advantage from side, jumping into backline and managed to get kills on Azir and Senna. That was just great. It doesn't matter that Teddy just instantly died. They used every ability, so they cannot block. Baker or Kana on the back line, so they just cannot win without any damage dealers. Orin and Tom Kent, yes, they are strong, but Baker and Kana is just way more stronger than. Yeah, them. and also BDD's ultimate was used onto targets that still had the cosmic radiance. It was okay. so incredibly close, but it was like one second, and it mitigated all the damage of the Azir ulti, which is actually huge because the amount of damage that, that mitigates is just gigantic like emperor's divide does a huge amount especially after hitting three people like it did in that instance but they were immune to damage so it just basically did nothing apart from repositioning some members of t1 and yeah nine kills difference total, total uh 11 kills i think this is actually huge difference right now oh yeah between those teams and but still, Teamfight is looking strong for Genji side because they still have Azir and Orn and Senna. It's still fine. Yeah, there's still a chance for them to win in these 5v5s. You're exactly right. But now Kana's picked up an, an Emperor's Divide of his own. No flash available. Faker does have his. Teddy has his. It's now Kana looking for the engage. Devour has to be used onto Elise Sin as the Infernal Drake is taken here by T1. Life gets oh. hit by the abscond at max range there as Canard still holding on to his hijacked ultimate. Perfect oh, execution man. as Faker's just playing with the backline right now as the rest of T1 are moving like a steam train. Empress Divide used for absolutely no reason, but it doesn't matter. Teddy already has the triple kill and they'll move towards Baron. T1 is literally making like a Genji is not even first place team, by the way. Yeah. It seems like just first place team versus uh, something kind of middle pack of the team. This is a T1 in crazy form in this last game. It feels like as this series has gone on, T1 have just been getting better and better. And now, they have 23 minutes, pick themselves up a Baron. They are even going to deny this uh, outer turret from being taken as Clid does have safeguard again himself to safety, but how safe is he as Fake is going to turn up? Kickback gets a knock up onto Kana as the teleport now going to be coming in from Rascal. Is this Gen G's opportunity to turn it for the Cosmic Radiance? He's going to say no. Another Ornhorn as Kana picks his up. Ruler's going to get knocked up into the air, but not before he gets BDD? his ultimate off. BDD, gigantic ult. He's going to separate all of T1. In fact, the positioning of that was just stunning. Ruler's even going to be able to get a red buff here, but it's not necessarily a team fight win as only effort went down. That was great chance for beat uh, Genji right there, but they only lost to, uh, one kill, so it doesn't affect the game that much. Yeah, I couldn't believe it actually. I, I thought that after the Emperor's Divide was that Im impactful, after Genji managed to get the teleport for Rascal right into the front line, exactly where he wants to be, it was going to be all she wrote. But never you mind. This was the previous team fight though, where T1 were able to get a big lead. Oh man, Baker is just playing with them. And look at this apple, man. Just so apple good. that apple did. Maximum effort. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's just so many different things to replay. It's insane. Is that... I mean, oh. this fight was not necessary by T1 side, but... I mean, it just shows that T1 has changed so much. Because before, they really didn't want to take the fight before a Teddy gets four items. But right now, 
They don't even need to fight here, but they're just taking it because they feel like they're strong enough. And somehow Kana didn't uh, die in the end there. I think he was down to like single digit health as he pushes yeah. in the bottom lane. We've still got Baron for a minute's time. And uh, Kana is going to move back down here, get rid of all of these minions. Rascal has to answer and the rest of T1 are pushing in every other lane. Faker on the top side will easily be able to get this in a turret whenever he would like to. And now Clid has to safeguard to get himself to safety. And effort over to the side, just getting rid of every single ward that Genji has in the area. Yeah, I just want to spotlight it again, because at round one, T1 has been always play for late and not making any single plays before uh, they get the item. But right now, it's dramatically changed. Their playstyle right now is just so rushing. Yeah. I mean, the broadcast team said Genji is the sports car and uh, T1. T1 is just literally rushing with the 300 kilometers per hour. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like T1, it's not that they're a sedan, it's that they're like a steam train, you know, that just continues to get faster train. and faster and faster. Doesn't have the acceleration, you know, out of the gate, you're not going to get crazy speeds, but, you know, then you turn into a bullet train, something like that, and you're going incredibly fast, and that is uh, sort of how T1 has taken the approach to this particular game. So maybe they're just a different vehicle entirely. Oh, maybe they are just a fire truck because they don't stop anymore. <laughs> Even though the red, red lights, you know, they don't stop anymore. Yeah, that doesn't actually, it doesn't matter what kind of car you are if you can just avoid the road rules completely. And so maybe that's yeah. the idea. There are some, there are some decent analogies. I'm, I'm happy for you guys at home to go with whichever analogy that you want at this time. <laughs> but now, looking for Anyways, Rascal again. Anyways, T1 has all the pressure, by the way. And Infernal and Soul like... in 20 seconds. Oh yeah. Looking like every teamfight is gonna be T1 side right now. At this point. Genji still need extra 10 minutes to take uh, this game more even. Oh. Or... Well, are they going to take the fight here? Well, we'll see whether they can. Inner turret does go down. Genji have inside track into the inhibitor turret, but you can see T1 desperately just want to give Teddy some time to take down this Infernal Drake. Canner in position oh, to try and clear waves. Thing. Oh man, Genji, they had the opportunity while the Drake was being taken to try and get an inhibitor turret, but instead they're just going to take an inner and trade it for Infernal Soul. That is not worth it, guys, in any way. Yeah. Fire truck is here, you cannot go away. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, this fire truck is not going to be putting out fires, it's going to be lighting them. It's got three infernal drakes behind it, and that is a lot of heat. And Teddy's moving towards the inhibitor turret in the mid lane. Genji have been routed completely. Faker is just playing bouncer to try and avoid Genji. Ruler taking so much damage from that Ornhorn, my god! He is going to go obscured right now, but Faker dies into the back just line. Melted. Oh, the Emperor's Divide misses the Akali as he dashes to the side. And now, Kuz is massive. He's got the Cosmic Radiance, puts the shades on, and T1 are going to rid the map of Genji members and take them down once again. Genji, they can't lose to any other team in the LCK, but at two times of asking, T1 have come up trumps. Coach Kim said they don't deserve first or second place, but with this performance, T1 definitely deserves first or second place. Oh, absolutely. And they are very, very close to first as Teddy dives onto the fountain. The Nexus is going to go down. The Ace comes in as Ruler pops back up, but not in time to actually get the kill. He throws out the ultimate, presses some buttons, but he's not going to stop the Nexus from falling. T1 topple Gen G again. They just stomped it. It was just so fast game at game 2 and game 3. I cannot even believe it. Is it the same T1 that we know? I don't know, man. Or is this... I feel like... A A <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's insane. Like, I, I think that what you were talking about, about Coach Kim, like, giving them the advice, things like that, and the way that they adapt after each game is so, so true. Because yeah. the difference between the compositions, game 1 and 3, weren't that different, right? Like, this was all about oh, T1 yeah. having to play early. And in game one and three, it was completely different the way that they played it out. Like, game three was so aggressive and just absolutely fantastic to see the change of heart with how they play out the game to be better towards their win conditions based on what their opponent had available.
Yeah, this is what I want to see from T1, smart aggressiveness. I was talking about this so many times, but no one could do that in LCK, but T1 finally showed off against the first place team. Yeah. And yeah, really impressive performance. And especially, I just want to spotlight Kanna and F4 again, because they improved so much from Rob. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Baker and Teddy is always playing good, so I have no doubt okay, uh, with those players, but Kanna and Effort, man, what did, uh, what they did to them? I don't know. I don't know what they've been feeding them in the T1 team house, but look at this. Faker comes through, eliminates Ruler before anything could happen, and then flashes out of BDD's ultimate so that the Akali is completely untouched. Then able to get back into the fight. The Cosmic Radiance was used super late just to make sure there was no way that T1 loses. I mean, yeah, I just want to shout out to Effort again. He's, he's powering at game two. Oh, you do it, you do it. Oh, yeah. And this was T1, like, controlling the positioning completely of where Genji were. They were like shepherds with their flock. Oh, this is like, they were talking about just going mid was just cancelling the base, but Baker is like silence and ef right after that he, he got the Senna, he's like shouting We got the Senna, we got the Senna, we, we won the fight and we won the game Damn right so they it's did like, yeah, I mean, that was kind of super play at the same time because they were calling mid tower oh, yeah, and they're hyping up on the, the performance by Kana at the same time. <laughs> and as a young player, that actually means so much uh, for Kana as well. So a huge congratulations to him. A great performance. Yeah. Baker literally said Kana is performing so good. Well, he definitely was. He got my uh, MVP vote. Absolutely. Just a great <laughs> performance from the Silas. Uh, really good to see once again the Silas sort of stopping the Orn because it felt a little bit stale to have Orn needed to either be banned or he would just win the game most of the time. Oh, yeah. But two games in a row, T1, they give away the Orn, they allow that one to be picked, and they have the Silas in their back pocket. Uh, in order to counteract it. Really, really clean stuff from T1. And honestly, it felt like it should have been probably a 2-0 in favor of T1 after game one was so very close to just being a T1 snowball victory after one team fight. Yeah, I mean, and also they proved that they deserved the win because game one, maybe some people are saying that Genji played better, but it was also T1's uh, favor until the, the HP, 1 HP issue on the <laughs> mid lane team fight. Yep. But anyways, they showed that they deserved it. Uh, deserve it today. Yep. And this level 3 gank, while you are removing your cat, it was really impactful. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, this, being able to utilize Triumph and Kingslayer to get back to exactly the right amount of health to survive the gank is... Uh, that's crazy. Don't know whether that was exactly what they wanted to do, but it was pretty clean. And uh, T1, I don't know, something something just happened, and they realized the uh, level of aggression that they were capable of in this series. I mean, it was so joyful to watch, because I was literally talking about after game one, they fought for 30 minutes and for uh, 5 minutes, right? So I was thinking about suggesting this chrono break to... Uh, 30 minutes and just see how they fight five minutes for the late game. Yeah. But this time around, we didn't need to, and P1 just pulled the trigger so many times when they need to. So it was really great to see. Yeah. And also, fantastic to see Faker's Akali. I don't think it, it's been a really long time since we've seen this particular pickup for Faker, and he played it so damn well. I think that Kana deserves the, the player of the game, but Faker is a close second this game because Azir is such a huge pick in the LCK at the moment, and Faker found yet another option into it here with a, a very creative uh, Akali pick. Yeah. And also, Kana playing into Orn. Maybe someone doubt a lot, especially me. Yeah, me too. I was a big Orn fan, but he showed that why Orn is uh, not great for the blind pick. Show that it's a right not Aatrox. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad that you uh, bring up that it wasn't Aatrox this time around. And I'm okay with Orn being powerful if there are ways to deal with him in the draft, right? Yep. And now that we have Silas, it feels like Orn is in a much more comfortable position in my mind when it comes to the LCK. 
because it's not only Kanna. I mean, Kanna's a fantastic uh, Silas player, but we've seen Cube make it work. We've seen a lot of different people make it work now so that Ornn isn't one of these just safe, blind, wins every single lane champions here in the LCK. And also Azir. Yeah. Azir lost a lot of games today. In this series especially, Baker lost to Zillion and BDD lost to Akali. Yeah. So maybe pick prioritize will change after this game. Yeah, so maybe it's not going to be, you know, first round blind pickable uh, this time around. We're going to see a little bit more sense being made because also Teddy being able to get Callista every single game uh, in this series is pretty silly. But my God, Kana did so much damage this game. Yeah, he did everything. So that's why I voted for Kana. So he deserves the POG for today because, yeah, I mean, his performance was just on point. Yeah, super good. And having a look at the gold graph, once again, like neck and neck for so incredibly long. And then that one dive top lane and T1 never let off the gas. I actually love that you can see it in the gold graph that they get one advantage and then it's linear. They just keep taking and taking and taking and the game is over. Eight, one and 10. He only died on the fountain at the very end of the game. 33% of the team's damage on a Silas. I don't think there's any easier player of the game to give. Yeah, and 100% uh, part direction, kill part direction on the uh, top side, by the way. Oh, heck yeah. As top That's laner, 100% kill part direction is like, oh man, that player just did everything. And just shows that him and Kuz have that synergy built up that we thought only Ellen and Kana had. So really, really cool to see uh, from the T1 jungler as well. That is right. And also happy to see Baker plays good. I mean, he's always performing better than uh, last year, but especially round two, he's like something else. Oh yeah. He's and on so many different champions as well. His like champion pool is just gigantic. So I'm not sure if Genji played that bad this series or T1 is just so, so much better than T1. I don't know. So what's the answer? What do you think? Well, I think the answer is uh, Kana's pretty damn good and played exceptionally well in this game three. I think we need to think about it from another angle as well, because when you're a rookie player like this, a game three against the number one team in the LCK, like that is crazy pressure to be playing up against. Oh, and then to hard carry like that as, you know, a, a young player, damn, just really, really impressive there from Kana. So I looking mean, forward to the interview. Yeah, just in general, you know, you are T1's top laner, the legacy. Oh, yeah, we have the yeah, so let's throw it over to Jisun for some translation. Congratulations on the win, especially for stopping the sole number one team. How are you guys feeling right now? Yeah, this Genji series. We were also worried and feeling quite a lot of pressure, but so it kind of doubles the joy of winning. First of all, I'm happy that we won. And in the last interview, I said we will get a 2 0 oh, win, but a little bit sad that we ended up dropping one game. <laughs> Baker, isn't just the victory matters, not the score? He's just a rookie, isn't he too greedy? Well, <coughs> wanting to get the 2 2 win is not about really wanting that score. It's about the reflection of the confidence, so I kind of like it. <laughs> in game wise, well, we just all want to ask you about, like, you guys rotated Kalista and Tarek to Herald so fast. Uh, what was that decision about? Our bot laners are really good at making decisions for Herald. And our team, generally, we had priority overall. And also, Harold kind of generates earlier now. So that was the reason for our rotation. So who made the call? Give us the name. Who rotated them to the top side? I don't really remember, but usually, but do you make that calls or decisions? Also in game number one, you guys were having the lead, but in the last fight, it was so close, but 
that quadra kill from ruler kind of turned the game around. I think we were able to actually end game, but all my teammates were overexcited to kind of defeat Genji this time around. So I think they made a mistake. Hana, what's with that smile? Was that you? What happened exactly? No, I mean. Listening to Faker, I kind of agree with him. Maybe Kana is a bit trained in T1. Are you are you being real here? Yes, I agree with Faker right now. Faker, and there was a very intense mind game around mid lane. A lot of blind picks kind of popped up, and you kind of Tristana on mid lane was not a meta pick right now, and also Kali. I mean, the Kali champion itself, I just want to say, I always practice a lot of different champions during the practice. So, this time I think Kali was the right fit. And overall, the mid lane pick, well, Zoe, has kind of random choice of the, having the priority. And some people kind of named it. It was the sports car versus the sedan. So Faker, which one do you prefer? What's your taste of cars? Well, I enjoy the more comfortable one. But in real life, about cars, I don't really care much about how it looks or its appearance. I just care more about the functions. What about you, Kanna? I mean, he's a young player. He might want a fancy car. I want the speedy one. <laughs> and your game style as well? Speedy play style? Yes, I also want a speedy play style. So, Silas, your stolen ultimate was stronger than the original one. That hijacked Orn ult was so cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the fake ult was powerful and more impactful than the real one. How was your Silas game? I mean, I'm really confident in Silas right now, especially I've been performing so well on this champion during the practice. Faker, <laughs> what's your thought on his Silas? I think it's good at it. I mean, Kanna. In round one, he got ganked a lot, but today, that was not the story. So overall, I think Silas performed quite well. <laughs> and Faker, some people kind of are claiming that you are not getting a lot of PUG. I mean, you deserve more, but all the other players are also winning it, so... Any comments about it? Well, in the beginning of the round one, I started with the mindset that I am the best player in LCK. And I just don't pay attention to how people kind of comment about me. And I was about to say something else, but I just forgot. And is there any comments you want to add on? Because in the mic check in the very last game, game number three, you said, I will tell you more about after the game ends. I mean, today, Teddy, he was saying something, but it was too loud, so I couldn't hear it. So I just said, let's talk about it later after the game.
자, 그러면 페이커도 그 자신감을 말씀하셨고. 자, 칸나도 yeah, 그 팬들께. 와, I guess you are really confident right now. So, Kanna, you are also was the key player in the Genji series. So, any last message for the fans? I mean, I did play well today, but you know how it ends in the end. So I just want to continue this momentum and practice really hard and show better performance in the next series. So congratulations on the win once again, and this will be the end of the interview with Faker and Kanna after the Genji series, and I'm going to pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jisum, for the interview translation. Great to hear from Faker and Kana there. As uh, what did, we did it. Nine games, and I don't think you messed up once. You didn't even, we didn't even drop any cheeky F-bombs or anything like that. It's absolutely oh, perfect yeah. performance so far. Nah, I mean, it's okay. I mean, again, I'm sorry for the viewers who getting who is getting distracted by my bad English skills, but still, you know, I'm trying my best, and I hope you guys are safe. Oh yeah. Staying home watching LCK is the best thing. I know. We can actually Isn't it the do dream? It right we've uh, we've, yeah. we've got the life here guys and you guys can live it alongside <laughs> us. And thankfully, you know, it's now half past midnight, so North America waking up and can enjoy themselves some uh, some LCK in uh, in the earlier morning. So not bad at all. Yeah. And that was just insane freaking great matchup that we could see. Oh my god, today. so, so I'm good. Really happy. And also, now Wadid's got a new word that he can use instead of the F-bomb, so everything's just... Oh, yeah, I love Oh, it. you're just nailing it. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, tomorrow, LS will be back on the desk uh, alongside Ooh. me, so I'm going to have to go straight to bed so I can be up for the next uh, three best of three day as Afrika takes on APK, Darmon against Harmwell Life to try and break that tie on the eastern side of the bracket, and then the one we've all been waiting for, KT versus DRX, to see whether DRX can oh. hand KT their first loss in what feels like forever. Yeah, KT versus DRX, this is also definitely a hype matchup for tomorrow. Oh, super and huge. I, oh man, I'm so excited. Every day, it's it's a match of the day, it's like so great to watch. Oh yeah. So I'm so happy. Actually, um, I need we need to work out what the next day is to see whether even that one is going to be a hype one. As uh, oh, yeah. not really, Afrika versus Dom one. Not entirely sure whether that one's going to be the best, but Friday's still going to have some good matches. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Shout out to Wadid for being a huge trooper. Nine games in a row in a second language is just gigantic. You are back to speaking Korean tomorrow, so hopefully that is going to be uh, a little bit of an easier task. Uh, but it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here on the desk two weeks in a row. But uh, that's all for us tonight. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow for more LCK. I love you. Thank you. Good night. Tell me the dream myself and never be